Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Serif Software released new versions of their family of applications, that family being Affinity Photo, Affinity Publisher, and Affinity Designer. The new versions are now called Affinity Photo 2, Publisher 2, and Designer 2. In today's video, I want to talk about a new feature that's in Affinity Photo 2. They're calling this new feature non-destructive raw editing, and Really, to be totally accurate, they should probably call it non-destructive raw re-editing because with the original version of Affinity Photo, if you loaded a raw image in it, you did your edits there non-destructively. It didn't touch the original raw file when you were editing it. The problem with the original version of Affinity Photo is you couldn't go back in and re-edit that raw file and take up where you left off. Now you're able to do that. Now, the reason why I'm dedicating an entire video to this is because I really like the way they implemented this new feature, and I want to demonstrate it to you. I have Affinity Photo 2 open. I'm going to open up a RAW file. It's just an icon RAW file, and it doesn't matter what type of RAW file you open up in Affinity Photo. And for those of you not familiar with Affinity Photo, when you open up a RAW file in it, it opens up in what they call the developer persona. If you're familiar with Photoshop, the developed persona is akin to Camera Raw in Photoshop. And from here, we could do raw editing to it. And it's non-destructive. And the original version was too. Now I'm going to edit. This is the raw file. No edits have been done to it. I'm going to do some raw editing to it. I'm going to go to shadows and highlights. I'm going to bring down the highlights a bit. I'm going to open up the shadows a bit. I'm going to jump up to the top. The black point, I'm going to push that up a little and I'm going to add some brightness. All right, I did some raw editing to it. Now, at this point, nothing's different from the original version of Affinity Photo. But if you go over here and look at this, see the output, this drop down. this is new. See that choice there, pixel layer? That's exactly like the previous version of Affinity Photo. If I click on develop right now, what it will do is it will open the image up into Affinity Photo proper, which is like Photoshop, right? And we could do editing there. But if I wanted to go back into the develop module and re-edit something, all these sliders would have been reset. The settings I did to them would still be there, so it gets kind of baked in. So I can't, like, let's say I go back in, I'm in the, you know, Affinity Photo, and I go, oh, well, I opened up shadows way too much. I want to come back in and bring it back down. Well, everything here will be reset. But with this new version, I'm able to do it. And if I go to the drop down and click, you can see that there's two other choices there, raw layer embedded and raw layer linked. What that means is when it's all is said and done and I save this image as an affinity photo image, if it's embedded, it will take the original raw file and embed it. My Nikon raw file and will embed it inside of that file, right? The raw file or raw layer linked, what that means is when I save it, it will not embed that raw file in that Affinity Photo file. But if I want to re edit, I need that raw file available. So it has to be, you know, in the same folder or it has to be there so I could see it. Now I'm going to demonstrate it both ways so you could see what we're talking about. So I'm going to go to raw layer embedded. So we're going to do that. And I'm done in the develop persona. I'll click right here and now it will open the image up in the photo persona. The photo persona again is akin to Photoshop, right? And it looks like Photoshop. I'm going to do some editing here, just something very simple. And I want to add an adjustment layer to it. And by default with Affinity uh, Photo 2, adjustment layers aren't over here on the right. So I'm just going to add them. I'm going to go to window and we'll go to adjustments. And I want to add a black and white adjustment layer and we'll add just the default settings. Okay, so that's that. So I have these default settings here, but I'm looking at it and I go, wow, you know, I really should have done something in the develop persona so the sky looks better to begin with. So what I could do is I could go back to my layers and see right here is that, that raw file layer right here. Just double click right on the little postage stamp of it. It opens it up directly in the develop persona and look at my settings. Remember I did shadows and highlight adjustments. Remember, I push brightness up, I pulled the black point down, all that is there. So that remembered what I did. Also notice that adjustment layer I put on it is being reflected here. It's in black and white. 
Now, if I wanted to see it without that adjustment layer, I could just click there. So that's just showing me the raw layer, not any other layers I happen to have. If I want to see all those layers I happen to have, there it is. And that helps me then do a better adjustment. What I'll do here is I'll, I'll turn clarity up and I'll maybe add some contrast. Turn clarity up a little more, maybe not that much. Okay, so I readjusted things. Now I'll click on develop again. It's going to now return me back to my original, uh, you know, editing that I was doing in the photo persona. I'll double click, open up that black and white adjustment again, and let's go to blue. And I'm just going to pull that down so the sky looks more dramatic. All right, now let's say my editing's done. I'm going to save this. So we're going to go up to File, and we're going to go down to Save. Now, this specific one was the embedded one, right? So I'm going to write Embedded here, if I can spell it right. All right, so Embedded, and we're saving it to my desktop, and we'll just click Save. Now, we've got to give it a chance to save. Okay, so I'm done with this. I'm just going to get rid of it. Okay, now, let's go. Let's get rid of this, too. Let's minimize this for a moment. And let's look at my desktop. See my original Nikon RAW files there, it's untouched. Nothing was done to it. But here is the embedded um, file. It's called, I called it embedded and see it has the .af photo. That's affinity photo, right? Right there. We'll get back to that in a moment. Let's go back to our original RAW file and open that up again into affinity photo. Do it this way, right? There it goes. Okay, now it again opened up in the develop persona. Now this time up here, instead of embedded, we're going to do raw layer linked. And I'm going to do similar adjustments. We'll go to the uh, highlight shadows. We, I'll, uh, we will here again um, open up the shadows, rein in the highlight, bring that black point up, and increase brightness. All right, so that's good. So, so far, so good. Now we'll go to Affinity Photos, Photo Persona, and we'll go back to our adjustment layers. Again, we'll go to black and white, use the default. Again, I'm going to do the exact same thing, just so we're kind of comparing apples to apples, as oranges to oranges. And uh, you may remember to get back into the Develop Persona, I double-clicked on this raw file layer. What you can do if you don't want to do that is just click on that layer so it's active and then go up here and click on the develop persona which is right there and then it will open it up in the develop persona and there are adjustments are there like i did last time and we'll add some clarity maybe a little bit of contrast all right so so far so good we'll click there get back into affinity photo Go back to our black and white adjustment. I'll come in here and I'll pull blue down. Okay, now this one I'm going to save and I'm going to go to file and I'm going to go to save. And this one we'll call, I call the other one embedded. Let's just call this one file and we'll click save and it will save it to the desktop, right? Okay, it should have saved it already. Now we're going to close this down file and close. All right, let's minimize that and let's take a look at these files. There's our embedded.af photo and there's our file.af photo. And if we take a close look at them, you'll notice that the embedded file is 365.6 megabytes. The file is 950 kilobytes. This file, the 950 kilobyte one, that I called file.af photo, that one does not have the raw file embedded in it, so it's smaller. So if you have disk space, you'd want to use that choice, or disk space problems, you'd want to use this choice, this second choice, so that it's a smaller file, but in order for this to now open up properly in Affinity Photo, this one, that's the smaller one of the two, you need to have this raw file available for it to see. I'm going to open it up into Affinity Photo, there it is. And again, because even though I saved it, if I double click on the raw layer to open up into the develop persona, see all our adjustments are preserved. 
non-destructively because it didn't touch the original raw file at all. All right, and I'll just cancel out of that and let's close this down and let's open the other one, the embedded one, just so I could show you that as well. Double click on that, that opens up here. I'll go to the raw file layer, double click on the little uh, postage stamp and you can see that our adjustments are there. So you get an idea of what this new non-destructive raw editing means. Now again, if I went to this drop down with it and I had it on pixel, it would operate just like the original Affinity Photo did. And I would not, as a matter of fact, why don't I demonstrate that to you? Let's go over here and cancel this and let's close this down and let's open up the raw file again. Okay. It's going to open in the raw persona. This time we'll use that pixel layer and this is the way the original uh, Affinity Photo worked. And we'll go to shadows and highlights and we'll, open, or we'll bring in the highlights, open up the shadows. We'll again, go up here, increase the black point, increase brightness. Okay. Now we're going to, we're done here. We'll go to the photo persona. We'll go to adjustments. We'll have that black and white adjustment layer default and go, oh, oh, I really need to get back to the develop persona. If I go to the actual raw file layer and double click on the little postage stamp, nothing happens. It won't let me go back that way. What I need to do is click up here on the develop persona section but look at see our shadow and highlights adjustment they're not there they're gone the um black point i moved up the brightness i moved up reset and so i still could see my all layers but it's like i'm starting over in a way so that uh that's why this new feature i think is pretty cool uh, allows you to go back in to the raw developer which is the develop persona and re-edit things um, and not have to basically start with a new image from scratch. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.